So in this video, I'm going to explain to you as best as I can and as quickly as I can why you do not get the speeds that you are expecting when using an external Thunderbolt enclosure with an SSD inside of it. And this is when you're using an SSD, which is quite clearly way faster than the actual Thunderbolt enclosure itself. But first, a quick word from this video sponsor, who is Acasis. Acasis are the market leader when it comes to Thunderbolt peripherals for your Apple Silicon Mac. From Thunderbolt 4 and Thunderbolt 5 SSD enclosures through to Thunderbolt hubs and docking systems. With industry leading blazing fast speeds, Acasus has you covered. To find out more about the entire Acasus product lineup, check out the links in the video description below. And don't forget to use my 15% promo code for a 15% discount off anything you buy from the Acasus website. Okay, so let me get into explaining why you're not getting the speeds that you would be expecting to get from your external Thunderbolt SSD. Now, what I have here is a Thunderbolt 4 SSD and a Thunderbolt 5 SSD. However, for the sake of this explanation, I'm just going to concentrate on Thunderbolt 4 because probably more people have Thunderbolt 4 external SSDs compared to Thunderbolt 5. However, what I'm explaining here is exactly the same for both of them it's just that it scales up when it comes to Thunderbolt 5. So you've got yourself a Thunderbolt 4 SSD enclosure which is 40 gigabits per second. Now that 40 gigabits per second is the same as 5 gigabytes per second because there are 8 bits in a byte and that 5 gigabytes per second is equal to 5,000 megabytes per second and it is 5,000 because we measure things such as speed and storage and stuff with base 10 or deanery not binary or base 2 so basically it's a thousand not a thousand and twenty four so basically we've got something here which says it does 5,000 megabytes per second however we put an SSD in it, which is clearly faster than 5,000 megabytes per second, but we don't get even anywhere near the 5,000 megabytes per second, let alone the native speed of the SSD. Now, there's a number of reasons why this happens, but first of all, what we have to understand is the way that the SSD is communicating its data to wherever it gets plugged in. In my instance, this will be a Mac. So, Inside of the enclosure, we have a chipset. Now that chipset takes control of a lot of stuff, but one of those things is something called PCIe tunneling over Thunderbolt. So basically what happens here is that the chipset takes care of PCI communications running between the enclosure over the Thunderbolt cable to the attached kind of computer or whatever it is you've got it plugged into. Now, this is where our first issue comes into play as far as the reduction of the speed. And the reason why is because on a Thunderbolt 4 enclosure, we have four lanes of PCIe Gen 3 with inside the controller or the chipset. Now, each one of those lanes is eight gigabits per second. So if we times that by four, that gives us 32 gigabits per second. So the absolute maximum data bandwidth that we have got over PCIe tunneling through Thunderbolt is 32 gigabits per second, which obviously isn't 40 gigabits per second. Now to compound this even further, that 32 gigabits per second becomes four gigabytes per second, obviously again, because there is eight bits to a byte. And then that four gigabytes per second is 4,000 megabytes per second. Now at this point, you're probably thinking, but hold on a minute, Dave, I still do not get 4,000 megabytes per second, and I'm using an SSD which is capable of something like 6,000 to 7,000 megabytes per second. Well, at that point, the reason why is because we have a number of various overheads which are applied to the data when we are doing the transfer from the Thunderbolt 4 enclosure. Now, these overheads are going to include things like checksum, editing, and stuff like that. So, basically, 
basically this is like a check of the data passing between the enclosure to wherever it's plugged into obviously a computer in my instance which would be a mac then on top of that we've got various things like latency going on as well between the data now there is also bi-directional data going on here as well because one of the important things that has to happen is when the data is sent from the enclosure to the computer the computer has to know that the data being sent is exactly what it it has received now in that instance that thing there is like going backwards and forwards checking so again this is another overhead so basically we've got a bunch of overheads going on here which are quite specifically to do with error correction there's also data compression going on and then there is also check some errors going on and stuff like that and also checking to make sure that the data sent was what was being received by the computer now on top of that we have also got variances with inside the cables being used as well because the cable can have an effect on the actual bit rate and the reason why is because a high quality cable will have like less like interference and stuff like that or less kind of chance of data going missing and having to be resent again now basically all of those different various overheads on their own may only account for like you know a small amount of data loss however when we combine the loss of it together it will add up to somewhere in the region of say 20 to maybe 25 percent of the difference between the total bandwidth available and then the actual you know real world bandwidth that we are left with at the end of the day hence why that 4000 megabytes per second which, which we should be getting is then reduced down to somewhere in the region of 3000 megabytes per second at best for thunderbolt 4 now don't forget thunderbolt 5 might be faster than thunderbolt 4 but it too also has the same overheads so whilst it will be faster than thunderbolt 4 it will be slower than what you would expect it to be and you're most certainly not going to get the full speed out of like a very fast ssd in it due to the same types of overheads heads and stuff now one other thing that's worth quickly mentioning here is the use of a thunderbolt dock with your external thunderbolt ssds now in this instance this is a thunderbolt 4 dock with a single connection you can get some docks which have got two connections but the vast majority just have one connection to your mac or your host pc and in that instance we have only got 40 gigabits per second on thunderbolt 4 now this thunderbolt dock is going to have to do things like also transfer video to your monitor and stuff if you are indeed connecting monitors to the dock now what happens here with thunderbolt is that video data has the priority over all other bandwidth that's connected over a thunderbolt bus so as a for instance if i were to plug say a 4k monitor running at say 144 hertz or then a 5k or 6k or 8k monitor running at high refresh rates the bandwidth required to run at those resolutions with those refresh rates is what gets taken first out of the total amount of thunderbolt data available or thunderbolt bandwidth and then if you apply a second monitor to the thunderbolt dock that too will require bandwidth to accommodate its resolution and refresh rate now once that bandwidth has been taken up by the monitors what is left is all that you have in order to transfer data from a thunderbolt enclosure with an ssd inside of it like this one now what that basically means is is that although you might think that say 3000 megabytes per second is a little bit disappointing on a 40 gigabits per second connection with just the ssd on its own that bit rate will fall through the floor once you start adding monitors because as i've just explained monitors or video signals actually take priority in this instance and what is left is there to be fought over between the thunderbolt like ssds that you might have and also maybe you've got sd cards connected and stuff like that anyway that's just something else to bear in mind as to why your bit rates or data rates might start going down and down and down when using a Thunderbolt 4 external SSD with a Thunderbolt 4 dock and the exact same thing applies with Thunderbolt 5. Anyways, hopefully I have been clear enough within this video to explain what is going on to do with these data losses and hopefully it has been clear enough for people out there to understand why they're sitting there going, 
well, why don't I get the speed that I'm expecting to get out of my external Thunderbolt SSD? Anyway, if you found the video useful, please do give it a thumbs up. A sub to the channel would be absolutely awesome. I'm David Harry. Thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye now. Thank you.